we're all good and set. Sorry for that technical issue. Um, so we're going to be making some sugar cookies today. Mom was just sharing out a little bit with you about some of the textures and some of the different um, uh, pieces of it. So, uh, Mom, what do we have? We, we made the head, the dough, just because it takes a little bit longer um, to do when we didn't want to bore you all too much with actually dough making. But what, what's kind of the process that got to where we are right now? Okay, so like David said, we did do this ahead of time and we put this cookie dough in the refrigerator until we were ready to roll out. But this recipe does not require that. It's okay to put it in the fridge. Um, what it does require though is um, seven cups of flour, which is a lot of flour. And if you have a smaller mixer, it's kind of hard to mix it in there. Um, you'll see in the recipe, there's a, a cup of butter and also as you're mixing it, you're going to see, oh my goodness, it looks like it's curdled when you go to add the milk. It becomes a real curdled type of batter, but that's normal. Just keep beating it. And once you gradually add your flour, you'll this see it just, batter. it'll yes. just blend together. Okay. But we added, flavor-wise, you can put any type of flavor that you want for your sugar cookie. Um, we actually used almond flavoring. But I had this week Bavarian cream flavor and it was really good. That's not too easy. Yeah, yeah I just get So I was told I have to, you can't, I've never actually made sugar cookies before. And I remember this a little bit from when I was a kid. So what am I actually, you told me to do this, but what is this? So what, <laughs> what we're doing here, um, I just grew, cuts, this is the whole grandma, batter right here. Grandma gave me this, this idea. Okay. Grandma said mix um, two parts powdered sugar to one part flour. And I just always keep it in a Tupperware container. And anytime you're um, rolling out pie crust or any type of cookie, it's less flour going back into the dough so it doesn't become as tough. And the powdered sugar part of it keeps it a little, not really sweet, it just kind of dissolves in the dough. So it doesn't change the texture that much at all. Um, but it's powdered sugar. I put it sugar. down on the, on the on the roller here as well, right? Yeah, so powdered sugar and flour, two cups of powdered sugar to one cup flour, mixed together, and- This gets messy. It kind of gets messy. Yeah. <laughs> That's the apron. So point out the, the rolling pin. Well, this, we, is a, this is a Christmas gift I got her a long time ago. But there's different inches that you can roll out. This so how, how deep should, I just put the batter right here, and yeah. I should try and like, this is called kneading, right? Yeah. Well, kneading? you don't need to knead it. No? Okay, okay. Not a sugar cookie. That's fun. Red dough, sir. Okay. Um, but we're rolling <laughs> it out. It's not called kneading. <laughs> we're rolling this sugar cookie out um, a quarter inch thick. And you'll see we did some already. So they're a nice, it's not too thick. It got a little puffy. Not too thin. And the puffy makes it a nice soft cookie. And these cookies are called Butter Dream Sugar Cookie. And there's a lot of butter in the frosting and in the cookie. So they really are just a nice tasting. We feel cookie. like Paula Dean. Can I say that? I think no, so. No, no. I wish. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, so we kind of rolled it out. How, how thick should yes, it be so, again? So these rollers, um, this is so that you didn't roll it too thin. We have it one quarter inch and you just roll it out. If you want it thicker, you roll it. Thicker. And this is half the batter that the recipe made, right? A quarter of the batter. Oh, this is a quarter of the batter. Okay. So it makes a decent amount just with this quarter. So we got it down, we got our, our powdery stuff um, down, and now we're going to actually do this, yep. right? Just okay. press them out. Yeah. So I've got these little cute dog bone um, uh, cookie cutters, and of course, you know, it's dog license season right now, and we'll We'll get to that here pretty soon. Uh, answer questions or most frequently you know, asked about things. So I'm cutting into the dough uh, and I just put it right here on, onto the, the baking sheet, right? So what I'll do actually, you said just put the perforations in yeah. all at the same time. And the nice thing with this recipe, when you bake them, some recipes they just kind of spread the cookie dough and you can't see the form. This particular recipe holds the form very nicely. So, Some people like the cookies more more um, crispy, like the pizzelles we made last time. If you're interested in learning about the pizzelles and what we did last time, feel free to look back at our videos to see those. Those were very crunchy, right? Yeah, crispy, they, and they should be. That's the type of cookie. Right, so just put them right there. Yeah. And they bake at a temperature of 350 for 8 to 10 minutes. 
Uh, we have we tried eight minutes, and when we took them out, they were just starting to get a little bit brown, um, real light brown around the side. And so eight minutes works with David's oven. And I remember as a kid too, these would be some of the cookies where you get a lot of these like leftover things that you see all the different scraps. And so I remember stealing some and eating them. And they're actually um, they're pretty good. All right. I are tasty. You're not supposed to eat while um, you're baking. It's good. You're a little snack. Um, but you can definitely taste the almond. And then what are the different other options? You said you could do almond. Yeah, this week I um, had Bavarian cream. It's when I first tried this cookie, and Bavarian cream flavor was really very good. But you can do lemon, sugar cookie, orange. The recipe calls for vanilla, but whatever flavor that you find that you enjoy, um, same with the frosting, it called for vanilla, but we added um, more almond to give it the almond flavor instead. So what are you cutting out here? So now these are just Ohio um, State uh, shaped cookies. So just kind of neat things. My staff last year got me the mixer and uh, some of these cookie things, uh, cookie cutouts, just to be able to make cookies and bring them in. So now that we've cut out, so here, we can- this one in the oven. Okay. We'll get that together. Now we can reuse all this dough, right? Yeah, so, so don't work um, it too much it around. It'll, it'll become too tough. Just try to form it together, roll it back out a quarter inch. Okay. You might need more powdered sugar flour mix. And that stuff does work pretty well to be able to uh, um, spread out the dough. And it's just, you said a quarter of an inch dough, right? Yeah. Yeah. So these are just the leftover scraps. And then you can make a whole another thing of cookies just from uh, these, which is pretty cool. So we'll go ahead and we'll make a few more. <clears throat> and so, you know, why dog bones? Why, why are we promoting some of this? Well, um, we love to have little things in our office and we're actually, we're having a coloring contest right now going on until next Friday. Uh, kids have an opportunity to, to send it in. And we've had questions, you know, uh, for the coloring contest, well, do they have to be in school? Uh, no. Um, some of our best and most fun kind of drawings or colorings last year were actually preschool kids or even younger, and it's just fun to kind of see what their ideas are. So that uh, link for our coloring contest is up on our website, so you can go there, take a look at those, um, see what you know. Winner gets a, uh, a free dog license, and then also um, a coloring kind of kit and different things uh, for for them to enjoy with uh, colored pencils or crayons or whatever they might like. And it's just kind of a fun thing. We had almost 200 submissions last year. So a good number, and I'm just still reusing this, right? I can still. Yeah, just okay. keep rolling it out. So yeah. a good number of submissions last year. We sent them out to all the schools. Something fun just for the kids to, um, to be able to, to take a little bit of time and uh, enjoy themselves with. And the whole key is just to promote out uh, dog licenses. And it's kind of funny, you know, last, last video that we did with you, we talked about how our office does the revaluations, right? And how it's a big thing, it's uh, you know, 80,000 parcels, and, and then, you know, we do everything from the revaluation, so what you pay your property taxes and your value and all that on. We also do dog licenses, which is kind of funny. I joke with a lot of people, whenever we go and talk to like service groups or you know, community different things. Um, I talked about how you know our office almost has half a billion dollars that goes through it every year. But uh, what people are most curious about asking questions on are dog licenses. So it's kind of a funny thing that people you know really kind of gravitate towards and they enjoy. So, well, these aren't enough scraps to make another one. So we just set it off to the side there. Sure, we got the other one in there. Okay. Well, while um, so while we're doing that. We've got one uh, uh, sheet baking here in the oven right now. That's for eight minutes or so. So you can just keep the dough right in the fridge while that's going. Um, and you don't have to. It can sit out, but um, you don't want it to get too soft. And then you'll need more powdered sugar. And flour. More powdered sugar. So this is the other half. So it makes a decent, you know, a decent amount, a couple dozen. Yeah, you leave this one to the side. Leave that one. Yeah. I can't combine them. I wouldn't, because that one's warm and this one's cold, and it'll just mix better. See, baking has all these little intricacies that, like, you know, you just, I, I think you just throw things together, you just try different stuff. And, and you hope it see. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So, you know, what, what is the kind of purpose for dog licenses? Why, um, why do we even sell them? Well, uh, so kind of the main point is uh, to prove ownership. You know, of course, dogs sometimes run away. 
uh, they get lost, um, and they go missing, for example, or um, you know, sometimes uh, they're unfortunately stolen or maybe misidentified. Uh, you go to a dog park and, and maybe the wrong dog goes home with the wrong person. And so it's always important to have that kind of legal ownership aspect. And a dog license does that. It's an official, an official license through the state of Ohio, through our office. Um, and you have an identification number, which is searchable by the dog warden. Um, and she can uh, search it up if, if someone finds your, your missing dog, maybe you know, your, your pup ran away and went to a, a neighbor's house. They can just call the dog warden real quick, say, hey, I've got this dog here. The dog license number is this. Or they can even search on our website and see uh, who the owner of the dog license is. And it's a really kind of neat way that they can quickly make sure your dog gets back home and um, it's all safe and, and well taken care of. So that's kind of the main purpose of the licenses. You mean what am I doing try. wrong? No, no, yeah, no. I, I can tell. She's getting ready. A little bit more. Well, what, uh, this, is, this is still uh, for still, a minute, though, isn't it? A little bit. No, I'm oh, sorry. No. Do, do it how it <laughs> she she makes it right. I just I make no, it. No, no, no. There's no right. There's no right and no wrong. It's okay. Well, there's there's good and bad, I suppose. Um, and these are pretty puffy, right? They puffed up. So these were the dumb yeah, ones that we had in the oven. Yeah, we decorated a couple of just to kind of show you. Yeah. And then the red for the Ohio. And so you can you can just keep going with these. You can you know make more dough. Put them out um, and uh, I keep baking them as well. So we'll do this one real, right here real quick. Um, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. So how many dog licenses a year is, is normal? Like what would you expect? So we uh, uh, in the county last year, well the year before we started, we had just over nine thousand dog licenses. Wow. And so we had a goal of hey, let's get to ten thousand licenses. That were happened before here in the county. And we, you know, we're really proud when we reached that goal. We reached it back, I think, in October or September, even in the middle of the, the pandemic and all that, um, of people. Of course, if you think about it, we've got 97,000 residents. Um, let's assume that there's maybe a dog for every um, half resident, you know, families or different things like that. So we probably have about 40, 45,000 dogs here in the county, and we only have 10,000 dogs actually licensed, which, you know, full disclosure, I joke with people, I had no idea about dog licenses or what they were before you know taking office. Our uh, our family dog wasn't licensed. We you know we didn't know. Now that's her annual uh, Christmas gift, and it works out pretty well. So we've got nine thousand or so that are licensed here in the county. Our office manager Sue Belden, um, she's kind of overseeing that program. She is the licensed person that when you call or email, um, she's the one that you work with. And so our goal was to get. Not a ten thousand, and you know, you may say, "Well, hey, what's it? You know, what's it to you? Why, why, um, why do you want to have these dogs licensed? What's the point? And where does the money go? Well, all kind of ties in together. So the money actually is twelve dollars a license, um, which in in most counties uh, it's right around twenty dollars. So we're actually, yeah, we're we're a pretty good deal. Uh, oh, so this is sticking is that to. We need so to what look? happens? Well, I think it's still good. It's, it's still good. It's good on this side, right? That's all. <laughs> That's More all that matters. Looks yes. <laughs> um, so uh, the dog licenses are twelve dollars a year, and now you can. There's provisions where the state constitution allows you to buy a three-year license. Unfortunately, you don't get a discount, or a lifetime license, which is for ten years. You also, unfortunately, don't get a discount. I, I'd love to be able to offer. You know, hey, you buy a lifetime. Uh, it takes you ten years to actually recoup that money. But how about you know, let's give you a discount or something like that. Same thing for a three-year, but we aren't able to do that. Um, but at twelve dollars, what actually that money goes to um, is towards the dog warden. It pays the dog warden fund, and it goes to some of our local shelters here in the county through the county commissioners. So if you don't know uh, our dog warden, if you haven't met her, her name is Donna. Um, she's an absolute saint. Uh, what she you know interacts with, how she helps um, animals of all different types. You know, people say, well, hey, we have a dog warden. Do we have um, someone to go and? Uh, you know, take care of cats if they go missing or, or if they're found or, you know, is there something else? Oh, this is my mom. Just <laughs> someone asked. Yes, this is my mom, Bob. Oh, so, my mom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, you know, uh, is she a dog warden just for dogs or is she something for, for every animal? And, uh, you know, crazy enough, she's, you can call her up, ask her stories. We'll do an interview probably with her here. We did one last year uh, as an office kind of educational type thing. But she's helped farm animals. 
She's rescued bunnies. Uh, she, of course, rescues cats. She's done horses. She's done pigs. She's chased down uh, cows if they've gone you know, missing or if they have to be kind of uh, lassoed back in. Uh, so she really does kind of a little bit of everything. And there's only one dog warden. We've got an animal control officer in the city of Ashtabula who oversees the city of Ashtabula. But we have one dog warden for the entire county, which if you think about 97,000 people, um, largest county square miles wise in the state, and we only have one person really, um, plus our, our animal control officer who oversees all of the animal welfare aspects or um, you know, missing dogs or dog bites, for example. So um, any help that we can give Donna, uh, and that's through you know, selling more dog licenses, all the better. So we'll pause on that. So now, um, are you in the wrapping out for this? We could. If if well, you want them let's, to let's do some, yeah, let's do some decorating. Should I have that in the fridge? Sure. So yeah, we'll might as well. So these things have to stay cold, I guess. Why is that? Well, they don't have to, but it, they get, it, the dough gets soft, and then it does kind of get a little stickier. So at that point, we just, if we're going to decorate some, we'll just keep it in the fridge and keep it cold. So we also, just for the sake of time, uh, and it's uh, right there in the recipe link, too. Um, we made some of the frosting ahead of time. Of course, Christmas time, so we made red and green. So what, what's the frosting? What, how did sure, you... so the frosting, I think one of the keys or one of the great frostings, this is a buttercream frosting that we're making. It's buttery and fluffy. It takes um, actually a pound of butter and it also calls for seven cups of powdered sugar. But when you add the whipping cream to it, that's what helps to make it more fluffy and just, I think, adds even a little more flavor than just milk. But you have to beat it with the mixer a little bit longer than you would generally, because you got to get the whipping part going. But it's like a buttercreamy type. I'm going to put these yeah. in the oven once again for eight minutes at 350. We got the other ones cooling here. So how do you how do you keep the frosting? Like what and, and what about the food coloring? Is there any? So the food coloring, um, if you have the paste, remember I used to have those containers mm -hmm. from the. Um, What's it called? Candy connection? Yep. It's a paste. If you use the paste in the actual frosting to make a different color, it doesn't change the consistency of the frosting. But I didn't have the paste, so we used just the liquid food coloring. It was the dye. The red and green. And it kind of changes the consistency a little bit, but it still works. I mean, it'll still, these will dry and can, they'll be stackable between parchment paper or wax paper. You could also, if you want to freeze them, freeze them in your, put them on a flat sheet in the freezer. Once they get hard, then you can stack them in between wax paper as well. So we're just gonna, you just take a knife, and oh, I made this table have backwards. That's okay, <laughs> no one knows. Um, so you're going back to the conversation with dog licenses and the money, so the money, uh, like I said, it supports the dog warden, Donna, um, the funds go directly to her for her salary, for her supplies. Uh, she's got a truck that she goes around, like I said, collects not just dogs or protects, saves, whatever you like to call it, not just dogs, but cats, farm animals. So she goes everywhere and she's almost always on call. You know, if something goes wrong, if there's a, a biting incident, for example, a kid is bitten by a dog, well, someone's got to be there. So the money, uh, the $12 for your dog license goes towards her and it also goes uh, towards um, animal shelters here in the county. So the county commissioners are responsible um, per Ohio law for maintaining some type of shelter or some type of contract uh, with a shelter uh, for the protection or for the care of, of animals here. So we have a couple different ones that the commissioners work with and have been supporting and helping here in the county. And that money goes towards, uh, towards funding them, towards their contract and whatever you know, expenses or allocations they may have. Um, so once again, really important that you know, we have uh, the license fund to be able to support those two important pieces. That's where your $12 uh, goes towards. Um, and you know, again, going back to just the idea of what does a dog license do for you, uh, proves legal ownership, it helps find a lost or stolen pet. You know, if the dog warden does find a, a missing animal, um, and there's not a dog license with the animal. Well, we don't know, you know, whose whose dog or um, uh, whose pet that is. And so she's got to take it to the APL or to one of the shelters. And that process, unfortunately, is not. And again, it's all it's all per Ohio law, but it's not really the most friendly towards you know the family, towards the owners. You've got to prove ownership. You've got to go through a couple of different steps. 
and then you have to do it quickly, otherwise the animal could be adopted out. Um, if it's you know one where another family comes in and, and sees the, the pet, so it's always good to make sure that you've got the legal ownership aspect taken care of, and um, that's why we tell folks, you know, for $12, um, it's, it's peace of mind uh, for, uh, we've got too many cookies here, and I, however I pick them up, they're not going back down the same way. Um, peace of mind for people uh, to, to be able to, to make sure your pet's safe. Now we get a lot of questions all the time about, well, hey, you know, why aren't cats licensed? Um, and why, why don't, uh, you know, I, I have a dog owner, why am I getting penalized for owning a dog when cats, uh, you know, they're just as, as um, harmful to, you know, birds or to neighborhoods or different things, they spread disease, um, dog warden takes care of them, why, why don't they get a tax? Uh, and <laughs> my response typically is, here I'll get you our state rep's phone number because the state constitution uh, does not allow for the licensing of, um, of, of cats. Anything else than dogs, that's it. Um, so that's all we can do. We've had requests for bunnies. Now, I've got some frosting on my fingers, Don't. and I was told the last time uh, not to lick it. <laughs> so I am doing the correct thing and wiping off the frosting, uh, even though I did have some, some of the dough earlier. Um, I have a question. Uh, yeah. Go, going back to how to get the license then, is with COVID and everything, oh. um, do we, can we call the office? Can we get it offline? Well, I'm, I'm buying your dog's one, so Thank you're, you're, you're taking care. But I'm taking care. Um, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's me buying, not the office, just for the record. Uh, but, uh, um, so there's a couple different ways that you can buy it. If you go, uh, the link's right here in the video, um, or you can go and you don't have to do it in person. We get a lot of phone calls. Again, 10,000 licenses, that's a lot of people that have come in the office right now. You don't want to get out. You don't want to go in the snow. Completely good. So there's a couple different options that you have. Uh, you can, oh, I've got more frosting on my finger and I want to lick it, but I can't because people are watching. There we go. <laughs> good job, good job. Thank you. Um, so uh, the easiest option is to go online. You can order it right there. Uh, you can fill all the information. There's a processing fee uh, that you pay to the company that, that we use for the processing. Um, so you can do that. It'll get mailed to you within the week. You can also call us. We can mail you the application. You can do it all via mail, you know, send in a check, all the type of thing. Very easy to do. Oh, this is going to fall. Yeah. We've got another one right here. Um, is this hot? It might be Ow. a little bit more. <laughs> it's, thanks. Still hot. Thanks. Okay. So if it's too warm, we can be able to frost them. Yeah. Well, I think they're, I think they're fine. It'll, yeah, still they're fine. Too warm. Okay. Apparently, you can't frost things when, when the they're too warm. Will melt I, I don't see the the you know the We issue. can try. We no, can see fine. what happens. It's fine. I, I believe you. Um, so uh, you know you can buy them online uh, just by visiting our website. All right there, safe and secure. You can buy them via mail by calling us uh, or by emailing us and requesting an application. We can mail it to you, or you can print out an application on our website and mail it in. That's perfectly fine. Does or the, oh, go ahead. The local vet. Could we? Yep. Yeah, we've got, um, in fact, you're going to see a picture of this upcoming week. I'm using my hands, but I didn't lift them, so it's okay. Um, uh, the local vet, uh, Harbor you know, Vet Clinic, they're in the harbor, for example. You're going to see a picture uh, here this upcoming week. They request that we drop off some more. We've got some locations, local veterinarian clinics, uh, Cray Food here in North Kingsville, a couple others. that actually sell the licenses for us, uh, and you have the license bureaus as a help. While you're there, you might as well buy your dog license. So you can buy them in person there, too. Uh, or do the mail route and print out the application, uh, mail it in, that's perfectly fine. Or you could come in office. Uh, one of our big priorities uh, this past year has been not to close to the public, and we haven't closed to the public. We still see members of the public every day uh, come into our office and say, um, and you can come in, bring exact change uh, because uh, of different requirements that we have to have, unfortunately, but it's $12 a piece, like I said. You can bring that exact change, you can buy your license right there, if you follow my Facebook, you saw Judge Specht did that this past week. He came over and bought two of his licenses for his dogs um, in our office. That's perfectly fine as well. So it's however you're most comfortable and whatever you want to do. Um, that's totally, are they, are they cool enough now? I think cool enough. We'll try. Okay. If you see Ohio that's bleeding red, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not good. Um, but however you're most comfortable uh, buying them, you know, we're happy to sell them to you, happy to get that information out there. Um, we've got you know, our video from Dog Warden last year 
uh, where she kind of shares some of her experiences, why it's important for people to have licenses, but also just to have some of her job, her background, um, what some of the things that she goes through. And oh, so that's done in the oven. Uh, I'll pull this out. So what other tips or pieces of information? We talked about how to store them. How long do they last just out? Because I, I have a, I, have, I still have Thanksgiving leftovers uh, from last week that Let's, I'm still eating because they're still good. Please message him and tell him if they're too old and he needs to throw those leftovers away <laughs> so he doesn't get sick from eating them. Um, if you have a favorite sugar cookie recipe that you would love to share with us, we're always, I'd love to try something new. Um, this one I just think is delicious. I tried it for the first time this week and said we have to make this, this recipe. But I think lasting wise, um, in a Tupperware container, probably three or four days, maybe. But you can freeze them again and they'll last a lot longer. I can tell these are kind of melted. Yeah, it's like that. But they, if, they, if they just warm up and they're cold, they'll be okay. Yeah. yeah, just don't do them fresh out of the oven. Okay, well, that's, that's a helpful hint. I didn't know that. Um, so, you know, in summary, we're always happy to answer your questions about dog licenses, about anything else. Um, uh, the um, uh, the you know, coloring contest again that we're doing uh, this uh, next Friday is the deadline. We're going to be voting, doing those who can get them up on our website, the, the PDF of the license, um, of the license coloring contest. And two, you know, the, the actual deadline for um, for dog licenses, that, that kind of sparked my, my memory there. Uh, it's, it's kind of interesting. Once again, got to love our state constitution and the state laws. We're all creatures of them. Um, so the deadline is actually the season for dog licenses is December 1st until January 31st, the last day of January. And what that means is that during the time period, you come in, you buy a dog license for $12, you're buying it in season. That's if you had your dog, um, and that's if, um, you know, no changes, that type of thing. Now let's say, like our dog, for example, Bugsy, she's 10 years old. Let's say I forgot to buy the license between December 1st and January 31st. Well, what happens if I come in to the office and buy them on February 1st? Well, <laughs> if you come in on February 1st, I'm nice, uh, you won't have the fee assigned to you, but let's say you come in on March 30th, and it's a two month you know, after the deadline, unfortunately, we're gonna have to charge you a fee, uh, per, again, the state law, uh, for being late, and that fee is actually the full amount, quote unquote, of the license, which is double the normal season. So. You'd be paying, unfortunately, $24 for a late dog license when you could have just paid $12 during the dog license season. So you definitely want to do it on time and get um, get your license in as soon as you can. Now, another question, too, is, well, hey, I just got a new puppy. When do I have to have a dog license by? Um, well, for that, uh, the law says any dog three months or older. So if you've got a puppy, let's say, in March uh, this past year, well, then really by what is that, June or so, you should have uh, come into our office or called us, gotten a dog license. It would just be a $12 license because um, you didn't have the dog during the season and it's not a late license, it's a brand new license. And then you would be renewing your license on December 1st. So for that time period. Um, so that's a little bit about kind of the process for dog licenses, why they're important. You know, we're always out to help promote, um, help keep some of our animals, some of our people safe. It's it's uh, uh, definitely a public safety aspect, and you know Donna, um, like I said, does a great job promoting and, and keeping um, those. Oh, dog bone broke. broke. So sometimes those do happen, I guess. Um, but that's really pretty much uh, these sugar cookies. Like I said, I have the recipe, dog license information here in the link. Um, feel free to reach out if you ever have questions on, you know, on dog licenses. On uh, uh, oh, yes, thank you, Becky. Uh, for not licking my hands. Yeah, she said, she said, thank you. Um, so if you ever have questions, feel free to reach out to us. We're always happy to help assist. And uh, if you come to our office tomorrow or Tuesday, you'll probably be able to try <laughs> try one of these sugar cookies and grab one. Um, it's always fun for our staff and any of the visitors to come in. Uh, we're always happy to, to put a smile on people's faces when they're here. So thank you again so much. We appreciate the thank listening you. in. And we'll, uh, we'll be having another time with us talking about some other type of issue in the auditor's office and, and baking some, um, some tasty treats at some point soon. So have a great week. Stay safe. Merry Christmas.